Welcome back to My Block Jags, and I am Daniel Scurry. So we finally had a preseason game. Jacksonville Jaguars played the Cleveland Browns in the first preseason game of the 2021 season. This is the first time we actually get to see Trevor Lawrence um, against somebody who's not Jacksonville. They had the scrimmage. Scrimmage, to my opinion, was whack. They wasn't. They wasn't padded. They wasn't hitting. So it wasn't um, 11 on 11, full pressure, full speed, everything. But this preseason game, it was official. Everything was legit. Um, it was the first time we actually got to see him. Trevor was out there with the first team, took first team reps, was the first quarterback out there. In the very first play of the game, Trevor gets sacked. So let's think about that. Trevor gets sacked on the first play of the game, number one draft pick, um, gets sacked. Jacksonville Jaguars had an issue with the offensive line last year. You get the number one draft pick. Heisman Trophy winner, national championship, all that good stuff, and you still don't protect him. Granted, we end up drafting the dude from Stanford, the little guy. He's a um, he's not little, but his last name's Little, and he's the left tackle. But we need interior help. Um, not to mention, it has to be on your mind. Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow was the number one draft pick last year. Fucking, I think like game six or seven towards ACL because the offensive line wasn't blocking well. So let's, and Trevor's what, 215 pounds at like 6'6", six, six. he's real thin. So that was the first thing that popped in my mind when uh, after the first play of the game. But after that, he kind of, I mean, he did his little thing. He did his thing. It wasn't really much. I think they only gave him like 12 passes or something like that. So he didn't really have much going on. He, he did a couple, um, he did a couple passes, like short passes. He had one kind of 20 yard pass, 20, 25 yard pass to Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones, I don't know what the route was, but of course Marvin Jones, the he extended the play and ended up running wide open down the middle of the field and Trevor dropped it right in the basket, dimed it. Um it, it looked real nice. Um Trevor looked good for the little bit of time that he's he got. Um out of all the rookie quarterbacks, I think Trevor played the least amount out of Fields and Buddy in um New York. Um can't remember what, Lance, all these guys. I think he put the least amount. I'm not sure. But um it was good to finally see him in the jersey on the field playing. Um so I'm pretty sure he got his nerves out. That first hit took a lot of the nerves out. And he was just fine. He was just good uh good to go out there and play. Um Minchu. Gardner Minchu was the second one up. And Gardner Minchu He didn't really show me nothing different from last year. I mean, I'm being perfectly honest. The best case scenario that I have for Gardner Minshew is that I hope he balls out, balls out in the preseason like Teddy Bridgewater did three years ago when he was with the Jets. Teddy Bridgewater balled out. He went to the Jets, uh, one year deal with the Jets. He went to the Jets to, um, after his rookie contract ended with the Vikings, went to the Jets as the backup, balled out in preseason. They end up trading him to the Saints for like a third or fourth round pick or something like that. And uh, he went undefeated when Drew Brees got hurt that year. So he, he put himself in a better situation. The Saints were in a better situation with him. Everything was good. Good. The Jets got a draft pick off of him. That's what I'm truly wishing and hoping that Gardner Minshew does. He balls out in preseason, and we end up get, getting good compensation for him. But um, he didn't really show me nothing different from last year. Didn't really show me nothing different. Um, he went out there. He played. Uh, Bethard was the second one out there. He went out there and he was throwing some nice passes. He's the only one who actually threw a touchdown. He threw a touchdown to Taven Bryant. Not Taven Bryant. Um, oh, why can I not think of his name? A little small kid from uh, West Virginia. Taven Austin. He threw a touchdown to Taven Austin. They tried to go for the two. And um, the ball didn't uh, got deflected. But it was um, the quarterback play. To me, no one really stood out. Bethard, I mean, all of them did their own little thing. Bethard, to me, was the one, because I think he played the most, if I'm not mistaken. But Bethard kind of, he, he had some nice passes that he put in there that I was like, okay, that's cool. Jake Luton, I really don't. I mean, he's just a backup quarterback. Um, we got to see ETN, uh, ETN out there for the first time, number one. ETM really, um, unless I missed it, I didn't really see too many plays that he got. I know he ran the ball a few times and he caught a pass or two, but I didn't really see too much out of ETN. Um, 
I know the left tackle from Stanford, they had him playing left and right tackle. So I'm guessing they're trying to figure out where's the best fit for him. If Jawan Taylor or Cam Robinson isn't stepping up, they're going to plug him in wherever the other, wherever the weakest link is, regardless if it's the left or the right side. Um, you had Cisco and you had, um, I can't think of buddy name, 32, the uh, corner from, um, the corner from uh, Georgia. They were out there. And um, George, I think the Georgia corner, I think that's what it was. It got mossed in the end zone, in the corner of the end zone. I mean, it was good D, but it was a real good catch by the receiver. He got mossed, but when you play D and you're playing man-to-man, it's bound to happen. Um, kind of wish he would have turned his head around, though, because he kind of seen the ball and kind of would have made a play on the ball, but it is what it is. Uh, to be honest, this preseason game really didn't show me much it showed me that our starting five offensive linemen needs to be needs to be better. We need to find the best uh, combination of linemen so that way we can protect our assets and Trevor Lawrence. Um, and to me, that's the same issue we had last year. We needed better. We need better blocking for the quarterback. That's kind of where we're at now. We still need better blocking for the quarterback. Um, in my opinion, it's, it's still that's still going to be the number one issue going into the uh, season. Uh, Tim Tebow. It's our first time seeing him out there, number 85, tied in. So uh, there's a clip. There's a couple clips of Tebow going around. Um, one, Tebow went out for a pass play. He was wide open. Uh, Minshew threw the ball to him, and Tavon Austin came and caught it. Tavon Austin literally came right, right in front of him. Just caught the pass. Don't know who that ball was supposed to go to. Don't know whose route was what. But it looked like the ball was coming right to Tebow, and then Tavon Austin came and jumped right in front of him and grabbed it. Someone told me something about Tavon said that he ran his route and don't know what Tebow was doing. Yeah, haven't heard really too much off that, but that that was the one pass play that I think could have went uh could have went Tebow's way. He had another pass that was deflected at the line, so it got deflected at the line. Of course, it bounced off his hand. And it was almost intercepted, but it um, it counted. It hit the ground. Um, also, his blocking that was the biggest thing that I was worried about was Tebow's blocking. Um, lined up against against a defensive end, I really want to see how he was going to look. Of course, when you're running, catching the ball, that's going to be the easiest thing out of anybody. It's going to be run, catch, all that. But I want to see how he blocked because you cannot be an NFL tight end if you do not know how to block. Um, he had like a counter play or something. Tebow was supposed to uh, pull on the left side and lay a block. Uh, he did exactly what he was supposed to. It was ugly. It looked goofy, but he did exactly what he was supposed to do. He pulled from the right to the left, and he blocked the linebacker from getting to the running back. Was it? Look, did it look goofy? Yes. Did Tebow throw his body at the guy and barely hit him? Yes. But did Tebow give up the tackle from that same exact guy that who he blocked? No, he put his body in between him and in between the, the defender and the running back. So he did exactly what he was supposed to do. It looked goofy. It looked crazy. It's a funny thing to laugh at, but it did exactly what he was supposed to do. Now, the very next play, Tebow got whipped right off the ball, and it was a tackle for the loss. The defensive end just literally just grabbed him and threw him up under him, and he swam right through Tebow and got the tackle for the loss. So... Um, did I expect anything more from him? No. Was this what I was looking for from Tim, from Tim Tebow? I want to see, I point blank period, want to see how he was going to block. And he's, of course, that's going to be an issue for him if he continues to play at that, at this position is blocking. And you can line him up in the slot. You can line him up wide. You can do all that good. You can do all that. Line him up all over the place. Fine. He can stand up. Cool, but if he's in the three-point stands and on that line, he's going to have to learn how to block. And that was the one thing that I wanted to see. And I, that was my concern. That was my true concern about him since we don't have much talent at the tight end position. I want to see can he block as well as catch. Um, But outside of that, I mean, the play calling was very vanilla. Um, this is a new coaching staff. A lot of these guys were in college. So I do believe if something isn't working – they will make changes as they go to try to find out 
how to make things work. They're not these are not NFL coaches who are stuck in their ways, who have their own habits. These are a, a lot of college coordinators and stuff like that. So I do believe they're trying to. I mean, they're new to the NFL, just as the rookie. So I do believe they're going to tweak and they're going to try to find the right, you know, what I'm saying the right play calling and the right scheme for the team. Um, and I don't know who we play. I don't know who we play this next preseason game, but I am looking forward to it. Hopefully, we can get more out of Trevor, a little bit more in the play calling. I mean, I'm saying go a little bit more depth in the um, in the playbook. I doubt it. Um, we did lose, but am I really tripping that we lost? No, because it's preseason. I mean, you kind of evaluating your second and third string talent and the kid and the guys, the undrafted, the bubble guys. That's what really preseason is about. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Look at talent behind your first string and to get your first string ready for the season. So I'm not really tripping on how we look in preseason. No, but does preseason give us a glimpse of what could be in the upcoming season? Yes. So I do want to see improvement on the offensive line in these next two games um, going forward. You guys let me know how you thought about the preseason game. What did you take out of it? Did you think Urban – has something going? Do you think Trevor looked good? Do you think what's your what are your thoughts on Minshew? I mean, how you feel on that? And then let me know how you feel about Tebow, man, because I know a lot of people. Tebow is a hot topic right now on the internet, and I want to know how a lot of y'all feel about Tebow, man. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, but until that, next video, that'll be that.